Sweet, how are you all? Uh, so what we have going on at this tournament uh, this weekend is uh, each player actually has to bring three lists. Uh, and the rule being with those three lists, you cannot use the same named pilot in any of the three lists. Uh, so for example here, Evan's got Guri, Forlom, and Palob in this one list. He cannot use any of those pilots in his other two lists. Um, you're also encouraged to fly all three lists twice uh, over That's the right. course of the Swiss. We've got six rounds of Swiss. And you get uh, extra bonus prizes and an extra match point if you manage to fly each of your lists. That's right. So if you fly each of your lists at least once, you get a free win. If you fly each of your lists twice, you get special uh, uh, acrylic charge tokens that we're giving out just for We have uh, Aaron Dater and Evan Cameron, both uh, locals, right? Yep, both, both members, uh, long-standing members of the PTL. Yep. Um, and uh, looks like we've got a scum v. scum match. Uh, and I do see another quad jumper on the table, actually. We sure do. Uh, so we're actually still getting Aaron's list plugged in. But let's talk about Evans for sure. a second. Let's what do that. we got? We got one of the best ships on the uh, Scum Faction, Gurry. She got the much-needed mm -hmm. PS bump and uh, making her even more incredible. And I mm -hmm. think that this is a common build I think you're going to see pretty often with her. I think this is one of the most effective ways of u using her. Um, yep. In, in this edition, in 2.0, with her jumping up to Initiative 5, outmaneuver feels so oppressive on her. It's amazing. It's really flying, flying with it makes you feel so powerful. Flying against it makes you feel very demoralized sometimes. That <laughs> The amazing barrel roll, which is one of the most fun uh, additions to the game, uh, and then the ability to be able to reduce your opponent's attack dice when you're not in their mm -hmm. arcs, mm -hmm. uh, which Gurry's almost always not in someone's arc, which is yep. why it's really, really powerful. And then the advanced sensors being able to do that wonky barrel roll puts her one of the most hard ships to peg uh, peg down. She's like echo levels apart. To yeah, fly. she's really good. One of my favorite ships. Yeah. Um, I fly her often with afterburners as well. We've got outmaneuver advanced sensors. Yeah. Throw, throw afterburners on her and she can just... Um, Dominate. Uh, appear out of nowhere yeah. uh, sometimes. Uh, go from range three out of arc to range one beside you. And uh, suddenly you have... Um, uh, to deal with Guri in mm -hmm. your face. What else do we have? Now we're seeing, I'm actually really enjoying the amount of G1As we're seeing mm -hmm. out there in the scum list. I, I always thought it was a really cool looking ship. Uh, it was a little bit more difficult to make work, but people are giving it giving it a fair shake at the open this season. Now we're seeing Forlom again, um, with an, uh, Forlom's the ability to basically, he can pass stress at the end of the act, uh, the uh, combat phase, I believe. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> this is where Elusive makes sense, because Elusive is, allows you to re-roll <clears throat> defense dice, I believe, yep. at the cost of generating a stress. Um, I believe that's how that uh, works. Or so you do a red maneuver to recharge yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, you do ah, red maneuver to is. recharge. Which and, is where it all makes sense, because the um, uh, Forlom with that ability to pass off that stress yes. means he can yeah. do a red stop, recharge his elusive, and then hand that stress it, off anyways. It's actually even better than that okay. because uh, Forlom's native ability, not only do you uh, pass the stress uh, at the end of the round, but also um, whenever you do fully complete a red maneuver, mm -hmm. you get a free calculate token. Exactly, which works so, very well mm -hmm. with the red stop action that the G1A has. You gain yep. a calculate token, pass off the stress at the end of that combat, and yep. recharge your elusiveness all in one. Mm -hmm. And on top of it, you're rocking Triple O, who wants to be in range one as well anyways, yep. who can give you an additional calculate token if your opponent does not want to take the stress that you have to give him. Yeah, so that's so a really cool build on Forlong. You definitely get a lot of calculate tokens, or you're handing out a lot of stress. Yeah. Uh, and... Um, uh, the other thing with Forlom, uh, uh, which some people don't necessarily think about, is that you can hand that stress to a friendly ship too if you want. I see. Um, which is great if you've got advanced sensors on him and you know, uh, I don't know, that Palop's going to be doing a green maneuver the next turn. Right. Uh, sorry, a blue maneuver. You can hand that stress to Palob so that Forlom can do advanced sensors the next turn. Um, <clears throat> it's actually a really good, um, really good combo, I think. Um, uh, you guys have Forlom down at PS3. Isn't he PS4? No, he's 3. Is that right? Zakas is 4, Forlom is 3. No, no, they're both... Are they not both 4s? I don't know. I might be, um... Yeah, let's double check that. I'm going to double check that. I could have sworn. There you go. Oh, he is 3. Oh, what am I thinking? Um... Uh, you know what? I know where I'm getting confused. Okay, um, uh, never mind. Um, <laughs> uh, cool. What else have we got? We've got Palob. Palob! <laughs> oh. The ship you love to hate. Yeah, uh, so Palob steals focus tokens or green tokens, I yes, think it is. Yes, green, any green token at range 1 to 2 in either of his mobile or primary arcs. Is this any green? Can he steal a reinforced token? Uh, that I'm not sure of. I think it's focus and evades only. Okay, focus and evades. Um, so Palob can steal focus and evades uh, from uh, his opponents um, in arc. And um, <clears throat> given that he's got a... 
turret, a built-in primary turret? No, wait a second. Do they have... it, it is. It's got a turret. The Moldy Crow title gives you the additional yes. attack die on your turret. Yeah. Moldy Crow gives yeah. you the attack <laughs> die. No, it gives you... Um, you still contain the turret, but you also get a three die primary yep. forward. Yes. Um, so you've always got the forward arc, plus you have the two die turret. Correct. Either left or right or and rear. And the double Falcon stack. So, focus, sorry, focus token stack. Yep. Uh, so it's very easy to um, make sure that your opponents are in arc. Yep. Um, it's a de debris gambit that's interesting and new that we don't often see. Yep. Yeah, uh, debris gambit. So that gives you a red evade action, but if you're within range one of a. Um, range one of an ob uh, obstacle, then it becomes white. Ah. Right? Uh, so... Aaron's rocking something interesting. We've, we see... Uh, we'll, we'll save Nim for last because he's got the most going on. Oh, so wow. We'll, there's a lot going on. Yeah. Yep. Well, as <laughs> always with the Skurg, there's always a million upgrades. So let's take a look at the other two that are quickly, a little bit easier to get through first. Mm -hmm. As we just finished talking about Guri. Guri's Guri. She's amazing. Uh, but he's got a different build on it, which makes it, which is very, very interesting. Interesting. Um, so yeah, we've got Guri with Predator, Collision Detector, and Afterburner. So Afterburners is great. I will love that to death. I don't think Collision Detector is as good, although it does let you use that Afterburners boost to go over a rock. Absolutely. Um, and uh, even if you hit a rock on a particular turn, you can still use the Afterburners boost because it's not part of your action phase. Right. Uh, so Collision Detector and Afterburners kind of go well together. Um, <clears throat> uh, and then there's Predator on there. Predator, which allows you to reroll if someone is in your bullseye, bullseye arc, arc yep. um, which is, I think, tricky with Guri. I don't think it's nearly as easy to proc as Outmaneuver, um, but it's also only, what, like two points or something yeah, like that? Yeah, it's two points. Um, and um, uh, so definitely an easy add if you've got the points, but um, but uh, I think Aaron's going to be missing that Outmaneuver. It's uh, it's just so good on, on Guri that... Um, uh, Predator doesn't even come close to matching up. Yeah, and then the Jakku mm -hmm. Gunrunners, we saw a bunch of those in the last game, mm -hmm. but also sporting the Triple O and the Contraband Cybernetics, which means they can pop that, do a reverse, and still space tug somebody. Yep, yep, yep. Or they could do the uh, reverse, did I say that already? You can the two sloop and still space tug somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Contraband <laughs> lets you do some fancy things once during the game, uh, although I think you take a stress to use it, and then you end up piling on stress when you do it. Um, but it is... Uh, uh, it's, it's for that one time, right? That one time you yeah. need to just cause some real trouble. That one clutch um, turn. And as you can see up there at the top of the upboard, we, it looks like Evans tipped his hand a little, a little bit. It looks like he has a hate on for Captain Nim. Yeah. Conveniently enough, as a ship we haven't talked about yeah. yet. So let's dive into that okay, one. Okay, so Captain Nim. Uh, first thing about Captain Nim, we should acknowledge what's happened with him uh, from, from 1.0 to 2.0. Okay. Um, so uh, his ability now is that he can hold bombs on the board, mm -hmm. right? Like he could before. Mm -hmm. um, um, and he also, um, when bombs obstruct uh, obstruct attacks, he gets the free evade. Right. right. But I think it's only for him now instead of the entire list, right, which is what it was in 2.0. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so that's a little weakened. Um, and the holding bombs ability came from the rebel version of Nim. So he's actually a combination of the old rebel Nim and the and the old scum Nim. We've seen that a lot in 2.0. Boba's kind of got a little bit of his abilities kind yep. of folded into each other. Yep. They, they shunt his imperial ability off into the uh, slave into title. The title. Yep. Uh, it's, been, it's been a really good way of re they kept the mechanics that were working for the game, but they mm -hmm. repositioned them where they needed to go. Mm -hmm. Uh, Captain Nim was everybody's nemesis in 1.0. Yeah, so Mark uh, Mars Mike Beard here says, Captain Nim was my nemesis in first edition. Um... Wound up running Rainbow Defenders a ton just so I'd be able to do something against Nim Miranda. Yeah, it's for sure. Nim was dominant in in first edition yeah. um, for a lot of reasons. Um, high PS plus genius plus trajectory simulator plus proton bombs and all this stuff. Um, things have changed a little bit. We do have a version of that going on here. So let's go through his upgrades. Yep. Ion Cannon Turret, which we know is the best turret in the game currently. Yeah, I mean, there's only, only two. two. Yeah. <laughs> but it, you know what? It, it, I feel like even if there was more, it's still a really good turret yeah, now. This is the thing. You're only doing probably one damage with that dorsal turret anyways. Yeah. So you might as well go Ion. Absolutely. Right? And um, the ability that now, that especially with the changes to Ion, that the first hit does damage and yep. then everything else adds Ions, you could technically in range one Ion a big base ship in one attack. So I love the Ion Cannon. It makes a lot of sense here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, proton Bombs are Proton Bombs. We all know that those are amazing. Those are deadly. Those are a problem. Yeah. 
Yep. Uh, he's rocking the seismic charges, which I really love the mechanical change to them in 2.0. Yeah, seismic really charges fun. are really fun. They um, really feel like they're from the movies when you saw them make that amazing sound effect and explode the yep. asteroids. I love the way they work. The a thing... blade of plating. Sorry, I'm going to run through everything and then you can sure. take over. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> just because I think we're going to get into combat soon. I yeah, want to yeah, get yeah, the let's list go through. done before we get there. Uh, so we've got a blade of plating. Yeah, exactly, which I think is really way more important on ships that can trajectory sim bombs forward as we're seeing Aaron do right now because you're going to... It's almost impossible not to damage yourself anymore in this edition mm-hmm. with trajectory mm-hmm. sims. Uh, I think actually it is impossible now, except for maybe a death rain who can hard stop, bomb it forward, and stay where they are. Um, and then we're going to see the Havoc title, which allows... Uh, what does Havoc do in this edition? They've changed uh, that. There Havoc you know. just removes the crew and adds a system Which and, is what you need to get uh, Genius and, and Trajectory genius Sim. Okay. Although, so here's the thing. Yep. Genius and Trajectory Simulator yep. don't work together anymore. Yep. Um, so if, actually, if we could bring up Trajectory Simulator... Um, what it says specifically is you can only do it, do it during the system, system phase, phase. Which we've seen, this is why Aaron launched the bomb now, even though he hasn't uh, hasn't activated him yet. Yeah, this exactly. All bombing has now been moved into the system phase, yep. so that your opponent gets a chance to see the bomb before they make any repositioning options. Yeah, so which I'm I actually, love that option. I'm actually wondering why he chose to waste... Okay, so... He can hold it. It's an Oh, that's right. He can hold it in place. Absolutely. What am I thinking? Of course he can. Yeah. Um, so it looks like that's a proton bomb that he's laid in the middle of the uh, middle of the map there. That being said, Forlom doesn't have to approach it because Forlom has a hard stop now. Yes. Um, so um, I feel like Forlom is just going to sit there and wait um, and let uh, Nim come towards him. Uh, Palob is doing his thing, rotating his arc, and... Uh, uh, hanging out. Is that a stop? No, that's a one forward. Mm-hmm. So that actually, I think, is in range of that bomb. Um, so it looks like Forlom's going to take a shield early on. It just depends whether or not that Aaron decides to blow up that yep. bomb. And or it, it can looks barrel. Like Evan's like, I'm not going to give you the choice. I'm just going to barrel roll out of the way. Yep. Although this actually puts Forlom in a bad position because now he has to turn into in order the bomb to get next a shot. round. So he's going to have to turn into the bomb. He can't just hard stop where he is because then he's got no shot. You're right. Um, and then Guri doing a one bank. It's interesting. I have a feeling Evan is coming a little too... Spreading his ships out a little too much. Um, well, that was an advanced census barrel roll right along the board edge. Yep. And then the hard one. He's keeping Guri back as long as Oh, there as we possible. go. Okay, so Guri's, Guri's going to come in a little bit later. Um, he doesn't have that afterburners on Guri, though, so the surprise attack is uh, not going to happen. Now, look at this. So, um, Aaron's Guri is mm-hmm. doing a four forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I were him, I might even consider using afterburners here. One boost after Palob. Or Depending on where do, that arc is facing. Or does he just do the boost action entirely? Oh, yeah. You could just boost Link into focus, focus. if you want. Yeah. Or calculate, that is. And uh, we haven't seen a lot of linked actions yet going on, but we should talk about that. It's a new change for 2.0. The fact yep. that now specific chassis that make sense the way they should be making sense are now able to do things called linked actions, where it allows you to take a, uh, a specific <clears throat> action and then link it into something else that's a red action. It's yeah. kind of like a soft version of PTL. Yeah. For every back in 1.0. Sh- almost every ship has access to some sort of soft, a specific case of PTL. PTL, right? You can do this one particular set of actions. At least the ships that you would normally have taken PTL on anyway. Mm-hmm. Like Star Vipers, uh, Interceptors, yeah. A-Wings, uh, Tide Vance prototypes, the Tide Vance. So, so I know they're called X-1s and whatever the hell they're yeah, called. Yeah. But you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm still called. So it's still the Sky Dome and all the other stuff. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, not, changing name, I'm not changing names. Um, cool. So, um, yeah. So, uh, did it, uh, P- Pioneer here uh, suggests that Forlom could advance sensors, barrel roll, to the right, and then do a one hard. Yeah, that yep. would work. That absolutely would work. Advanced Sensors is a really great card. Yep. Um, I think we're seeing Aaron use the Ion Cannon turret. Yeah, we've got a first shot. It and looks like no hits. Focus and no eyes, yeah. <clears throat> so he's deciding to not... And the reason why he took the target lock, obviously, because he knew he was in range one or two of Palab, and there's no point in feeding Palab a free focus token. Yep. Looks like a range three shot. Mm-hmm. And against that's two hits. Palab. Yeah, looks like two hits. What are we at? So just one hit and one evade. So no ion for Palob. No ion for Palob, and that's fine. Uh, we were seeing last game, these first rounds tend not to have anything happen. All these pot shots at range three, except, very little mods going on. Except that Palob's going to do damage into Nim for sure. He's going to do two damage into Nim. That's two shields down on him already from Palab. Master 1996 is asking if we can make the dice box a little bigger, so why don't we? We'll see what we can do, Master. Give us a few minutes here. Um, <clears throat> all right, 
So, not much happened in that first round of shooting. Uh, back to the next round. It's interesting to see how spread out all these ships are. Uh, so our last match... Um, uh, our last match was a uh, two swarms, right? A, a Jakku yeah. Gunrunner swarm uh, with Cath Scarlet and a Thai swarm with Hal Runner, Del Miko, and a few others. Um, and so, as you can imagine, they were all bunched up, right? And there was mm -hmm. a lot of bumping. Uh, here we've got three spread out, uh, spread out lists, mm -hmm. right? Um, Guri does well on her own. Um, uh, both. Forlom and the Jakku Gunrunner are going to want to get in close here. Um, and Oh, uh, Sky Octopus is making a good point. I do believe you're correct. Uh, the Ion Cannon is only range 1 or 2 now, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, so that must have been a primary shot right. from Palop. Oh, from Nim. Nim and Palop. Yeah. And I believe he would have used his primaries. Yeah, th those must have been primaries, not Ion. Mm -hmm. yeah. still, the Scrub still has three attack dice primary. Yep. Yep. It's me incorrectly <laughs> stating that it was an Ion Cannon. My, yep. my apologies. Uh, so that's actually an, uh, oh, it uh, looks like Nim took two, two damage shields. on from Palab, like I said. Oh, yeah. Palab is a, is a threat, a real threat in this game. The forward primary, mm -hmm. the fact they can token steal, the token denial. Yeah. It works as a mini Biggs, a mini Carnor, a mini everything all in the, one. The, um, not just Palab, but the Hawk in general is actually much improved. Oh, I think um, it's the MVP for 2.0. He's got a whole bunch of new, different actions now. You can jam, you've got a native boost. Yep. Um, but you've also got the Moldy Crow title, yeah. which is fairly expensive, but gives you that three dice primary. So I you, think some of us would argue that the Moldy Crow is probably a little bit inexpensive. Inexpensive for cheap. what yeah. it can do. Um, it's what, what 12 it does, points? It's 12 points, yeah. but when you put it on a ship like Palab, and you get a four attack dice primary, and you can steal tokens, it's this, and yeah. then. It's one of those cases of it's and then, and then, and then. I mean, like the Punishers. It's and still, then, and then, and then. It's still a pretty weak ship. Like, it can, it can be um, destroyed pretty easily. It's only got two dice and five hit points. But um, you have to have force mods or target locks. It's the only way you can do damage on it. That's otherwise true. Otherwise, you give it tokens forever. Uh, well, with Palab, yeah, Palab's ability is really good. It's, yeah. um, but uh, I find it's actually pretty easy to add the hawk to a squad now. You yes. can actually run like one of the rebel hawks with a couple X wings or something like that, and it fits because he's doing just as much damage out the front as the X wings are. And as we're right? seeing in the system phase that just passed, Aaron uh, has elected to not throw any bombs because he doesn't want to throw a bomb directly into the space that all of his ships are going to want to occupy. Yeah, he didn't want to bomb his own ships. Mm -hmm. Uh, so he's holding that proton bomb there. Yeah. Uh, I believe we've used one of the proton bomb charges. If we could mark that, uh, that'd be great. Thank you. Um, well, does the Skurg have a reload? Uh, Skurg does I can't remember. not have a That's a good question. What's the question? Does the Skurg have a reload? I uh, the Skurg does not have a reload. Does not have reload. Okay. Nope. Good to know. <laughs> I'm actually finding the Skurg a really fun ship in 2.0. Um... Just running the, uh, um, even just the Lock Revenant, the, the generic. It's actually kind of a fun ship to run. I mean, um, look at that token stack on Palab. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Is that? You can't tell me that ship. That ship is ridiculous. So when we, oh, is that <coughs> the target locks? And target locks from Aaron's ships. Then he's got two focus tokens and the evade that he was able from to. From Debris Gambit. Debris yeah. Gambit, yeah. Uh, although it looks like it was a red evade that turn. Yeah, that's why he, uh, Evan took the stress. But you know what? Whatever. Okay, you so... You have two focus tokens anyways. It doesn't matter if you're stressed. You can steal somebody else's tokens. So Forlom just did a hard two right onto the bomb. I guess mm -hmm. Evan's uh, thinking he'll just take it. Now's the good time to do it, right? He's Pro got the shields. It doesn't matter to him at all. Why not, right? Yeah, Eat proton bomb. bomb now. It's like, yeah, take the shield. Yeah. Uh, sure, why not? This Guri fight, though. This is going to be interesting. Um... <clears throat> Looks like Evan's already moved his Guri, so um, uh, now we've got Aaron doing a hard one. Looks like he's just focusing on taking Palab off the board. And that's probably the choice I would make here, I too. think so. Palab is a big problem for Aaron's uh, Guri. He's really <laughs> going to want to be able to leverage her ability to get the focus at range one of an enemy. He's, he doesn't want to be able to be like nerfed into not being able to use the... With, with the boosting and the advanced mm -hmm. censoring, he, he really wants access to everything that Guri can do. And as long as Palab is there, he can't do a lot of that. Um, it's tricky, right? Although yeah. Palab can't steal Calculate Tokens. That's which, true. But Guri gets a free focus at range one. Oh, mm -hmm. and there's the barrel roll. Good old curved barrel rolls. Although that's fascinating. Um, he's just opening himself way open to um, Evan's Guri to shoot him from behind. That's true. <clears throat> So it looks like Aaron did have the initiative. Yeah, he's he running linked focus and linked barrel, linked action to a barrel. One fifty four. Oh, sorry, linked action to a calculate for Gurry. How many points is is Aaron running here? 
Um, 77 plus... 200. Se- no. 77 plus 77 is 154. Yeah. Right? Plus... 190. 190. So he's got a 10-point bid. Yeah. Ah, so Aaron's actually using Genius, Ooh. which allows you to skip the system phase and use uh, it after you maneuver. Yep. Dropping another bomb That's in the action why. phase, and it looks like he's dropping uh, his second... Proton? Proton, because uh, the seismic won't do anything exactly. there. Exactly. So we didn't mention... Uh, we were, we were going to mention seismics before. So the yes. way seismics work in, t- in second edition is, of course, they um, when they blow up, you pick a debris or an obstacle, uh, that is... Uh, within range one of the bomb, mm-hmm. and then that debris blows up. And does one, does one damage up. to everything in range one of it. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's actually really interesting. Yeah. Um, one, it clears out the board, but the effective range of the seismics is... Huge. Almost range two, right? Yeah. Um, you can drop it behind you and affect someone much farther away than you would expect mm-hmm. um, because they're close to some... some uh, some asteroid. Uh, it also, like, if you plant it between two or three asteroids, you then get to choose which one blows up when it blows up at the end of the activation phase. It looks like Aaron's elected to let both of them go off, knowing that he's got a blade of plating on his nim, doesn't matter. Yep. And doing two shield damage to Forlom, and probably, I think he might have done two to get Palov as well. I'm not sure if Palov got hit by both of them or not. Uh, let's find out. Um, and now he's checking for Guri's, ability, Guri's actions. Which looks like Palov got hit token. with one. And, and Guri's in range one, so long she, hit she will get the free focus token as well. Is the other bomb still there? Uh, no, he let no, them both, both go off. Oh, they both went off. Yeah, okay. and he would have used the charge of uh, Blade of Plating as well. Huh. Now Guri's... That was a pretty great little turn for Aaron there, I have to admit. Yeah. That was nice. He's done a lot, he did a lot of work Guri's got a range one shot into Palob, and it looks like... Uh, what do we end up with there? I think it was nothing. I think he got a range one shot, nothing, and elected yeah, to fold yeah. up. He didn't want to spend any mods. He's trying to keep both of his mods for his both defensive roles yeah. he's got to make with his Guri. All right, so now we have uh, the uh, outmaneuver Guri mm-hmm. taking a shot at. I would totally shoot. Guri. Um, I would totally shoot uh, Aaron's Guri here. When oh, you've got like he's going after Nim. Hmm. Although, that's going to. Spend the focus for three? And then that's going to be two hits onto the Nim. I think he wants shields down on Nim. I think he knows that Nim is a nice, fat, juicy target, and yeah. that without maneuver, if he can get the Nim off the board, it's going to be a little bit. He's probably will. He's yeah. probably willing to bet that he's okay with his Guri. This is actually he's got all three shots off at Nim here. Yeah, um, and that makes sense. That's why he's focusing his fire. That's a that's a good question from Mars Mike Beard. Did Nim shoot and just fail? Uh, yes, Nim yeah. whiffed. Yeah, I think Nim. we missed it. Okay. Yeah, Nim should have had an, a range one ion shot, but I guess I, I'm not sure if he took it. Well, that would be a missed opportunity if they missed it, though. I mean, so here's the thing: in 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 the prototype Toronto League, we do, do we do fly casual here, um, right? Uh, that is our mm-hmm. general uh, general thing. And this is the 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 PTL open. So this yeah, is. He shot and whiffed. Shot and whiffed. Okay. With the yeah. ion cannon. So oh, yeah, with- a double whiff, and that's that's rough for Aaron. Uh, this is the PTL Open. It is a very casual tournament, right? Sure, we're playing for some interesting prizes and stuff, but this is not the, um, uh, you know, Coruscant Invitational, right? Um, we like to fly casual here in the Prototype Toronto League, mm-hmm. so I would like to think that even if I, either one of these two missed an opportunity, um, they would be willing to uh, let the other person make up for it or so on. Um, I'd like to fly that way. I would hate to win just because someone forgot something, Yeah. right? Um and, uh, and that was an obscene amount of damage on, on Aaron's Nim. Yeah, uh, so Aaron and uh, Aaron's Nim has taken yeesh, all eight, the damage. Eight damage in two rounds here. Uh, looks like Nim will probably not survive the next round, which is really bad news for Aaron. Yeah, uh, this might go really quick. Um, <clears throat> but we'll see how we'll see how it goes here. Uh, we've still got has the gun runner shot? Yeah, it did. Yep. It did. It uh, hit. It was uh, he spent a focus for one hit. Hmm. Yeah. Why didn't Nim spend any locks? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not not entirely sure. Uh, maybe Aaron's forgetting something, or maybe we just missed something. We 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 can't hear the table from where we're sitting here. Um. So uh, there might be something we missed. Uh, but that's all right. <clears throat> And did we confirm that they only took one damage, shield damage each? It looked like they got hit. Uh, Forlorn looked like he got hit with both proton bombs. 
would think he'd be down too. We might have to double check that board state. Yeah, I would double check uh, that um, the shields on. It looked like Forlong got hit with both the protons. Hard to say uh, from our angle here, unfortunately. But we're going to go double check that state for you guys. Um, cool. So, that being said, uh, everything being said here, mm -hmm. Aaron has initiative and has Guri. Yes. Right? Um, that can, like, you can win the game with Guri alone. This is something I am I am um, confident of um, because uh, Guri is so good. Yeah. It would be better if she had outmaneuver. Absolutely yes. would be better if she had outmaneuver. Yes. Um, I would consider taking collision detector off, putting outmaneuver on, and just leaving it at that, or taking afterburners off and doing uh, basically what I, what Evan has, outmaneuver and advanced sensors. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, which is actually of the two Guri builds here, the cheaper build by one point. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> But that Guri with advanced sensors and outmaneuver can do a lot of damage by her, by, um, on her own. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> absolutely a ton of damage on her own. Okay. Uh, so they're electing to not waste their time measuring. We know it's going to hit that uh, thing. That is a um, seismic that he's just launched with his trajectory sim. Right. Uh, he can decide to hold it there if he wants. Yeah. So that asteroid is now a ticking time bomb. Yeah. <clears throat> Now, I'm not 100% sure on the rules. If Nim dies in the combat phase, that bomb will just go off the next round automatically. Uh, well, you won't be able to hold it anymore. Yeah, so, so that's exactly what happens. Yeah, it'll okay. go off when it goes off uh, as normal. Oh, it looks like Aaron wants the tractor beam pal up, bring him into the range of that of that, uh, of that that asteroid. Oh, yeah. By using the space thug tractor array. He'll sign him a, a token, and that's how you can get pal up down. Andros says, oh no, people are catching on to Forlom. It was supposed to be a secret. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, actually, I played a, uh, uh, my first game with Forlom just, um, just last week. Mm. Uh, and he is great. Um, uh, this version especially, I, don't, I think the version I was running didn't have triple zero because I had triple zero on a different ship. Mm -hmm. um, but this version just as a whole... Uh, elusive advanced sensors triple zero mist hunter is really solid you are handing out one maybe two stress a turn mm -hmm. you're also getting or you're getting one or two free calculates each turn mm -hmm. um which means he's great and also you can just kind of stop right because you hand out the stress and you stop again you hand out the stress and you stop again yeah um and you're getting the elusive uh re-rolls every turn um it's really solid um uh, they've also gotten a bump in terms of health, right? That one extra one extra hull point mm -hmm. means Forlom's a bit tankier than he used to be, um, uh, and a lot of fun, I think. I've been toying with the idea of putting Season Navigator on him, which is the basically equivalent of um, First Edition's Stay on Target. Oh, okay. Um, where you can change the uh, change the um, maneuver. Yeah. Um, so you dial in the two K and then can change it to any of the other two maneuvers. Uh, for uh, and make them red, right? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> which would work really well in the setup. Uh, you're always generating stress. You're always getting the free calculate, um, and you get some way of adapting. Um, although that being said, that crew season uh, season navigator is pretty expensive, I think. So Evan's just basically showing us how that uh, four long works. He did the three bank that I believe is now red <clears throat> on yeah, the yeah, yeah. on that. Gaining a stress with the he did the advanced sensors for the barrel roll, mm -hmm. and now he'll be able to hand out that stress to the Jakku gunrunner or to the Guri, and he can even use elusive on this turn if he wants to, and he can chart recharge it next turn by doing a hard stop. Yep, yep. It's uh, gonna be looks like it's gonna be pretty messy this turn. Um, we've got Guri just bumping into Forlom. Yeah, probably didn't expect that. Um, uh, Forlom jumping in that. Quickly, they, yeah. This is a bump city. Yeah, this is pretty These wild. Big base ships, they uh, they bump. Although this well, is medium bases, but this is interesting. Mm -hmm. um, Everyone's gonna get hit by that. Well, I wonder how many different people are gonna get hit by that uh, debris hmm. token there. From that, yeah. From that do you let it off? You've got a blade of plating. Yeah. You hit. Um, I Jakku. think you only hit Palov though with it, so it might not be worth it to let it off this turn. But then his shields are down for your range one shot. True. Palab's probably going to die. Um, Guri can shoot into Palab. That, this Guri has Predator. No, yep. no, no Predator shot this turn. I don't oh, right, because his uh, bullseye arc doesn't look like it's on Palab. Yeah. yeah. Now, the problem is, is he, the only problem is, though, here, again, we see that power of Palab. Uh, Aaron can't take Guri's focus. 
Um, if he does, he just gives it to Paolo. To Paolo. Who's got the stack of focuses anyway, so it doesn't really change much. Um, that being said... Oh, well, oh so wait, no, because he, is, because he doesn't have initiative. Paolo steals before he gets the EV. Right, that's the new cleanup that's happened, that's which is true. actually really good for this edition. Yeah. That's from 2.0 now. You uh, Evan's Palop's ability triggers first, yep. and then Evan Aaron can use Gary's ability to get his focus. Her so, focus, sorry. So okay. Palop's in a really bad spot, I think, uh, with that shot from Gary and the shot from Nim. Right, both of those things are going to happen. Yeah, but Nim's um, definitely dying this round. Yeah, almost certainly, because uh, Forlom's going to finish him off. Yeah, he'll throw the extra attack dice because why wouldn't he? Oh, sorry, no, that's the, uh, that was Zuckus. I'm confusing the two of them. <clears throat> yeah, uh, yeah, I haven't played uh, played with Zuckus yet. Um, but uh, Forlom's ability generally still really good, and I think he's actually the better one. Because mm. um, uh, they're both uh, the same PS now, I believe. So it um, looks like Aaron did let the bomb go off, took the one damage on the gun runner, I would assume. So yeah, and there? one on Palab. Yeah. And this is a four die shot from Gurry on Gurry without maneuver. So this is gonna hurt. Yep. Uh what do we got going on here? Looks like it was all the damage. Oof. That is three hits and a crit yeah. against well, uh one of eight. So three hit no, sorry, two hits and a crit go yeah. into Gurry. Yeah. That's gonna be really bad news for Aaron's Gurry. Yeah. I think. Uh, Palab's uh, turret, I believe, is oh structural damage. I heard that's not good. We got structural damage, so one fewer defense die for Gurry, which yeah, is that's tough. Oof, uh, real bad, yeah. uh, real bad news. So now we're gonna spend the target lock. Uh, now I think Gurry is shooting no, into Nim. Oh, Nim, Nim is shooting into Palab. Palab. Only two damage. That's two damage. So that'd be one damage, one ion, I think, yep. if it was ion cannon. Yeah, because that, that was via the turret. So one damage, one ion token. Um, <clears throat> which means uh, they know where Palop's going to be the next turn. Mm -hmm. um, outmaneuver Guri and uh, Ooh, ion one. anything is a great combination. There's a good combat from there. There's four damage. There's three hits and a crit out of Guri. Into, into Palop. Yep, into, into Palop. Which I think is enough to get him. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's that's over damage. That is a dead Palab. Okay. <clears throat> so he's trading Nim for Palab. You know what? Most likely, and a lot of damage on his Guri. Uh, I'll, I'll take it, right? If I if I'm Evan, it right? frees up his. Yeah, I think for Evan, he's happy. He still has his outmaneuver Guri, who's who's death by a thousand cuts. She could slowly, and she's got advanced sensors too. Yep. Nim's and out of usable bombs. So here's four dice from four lom, four lom into into yeah. Nim. And I think that is a dead Nim. Yep. yep. Cool. So we traded Nim for Palab. Uh, again, I think... Um, I think... Don't forget, uh, Nim and half damage on his Guri <laughs> with the structural Gunrunner damage, four, so... Four long, yeah. yeah. Gunrunner into... Not into Forlom, but... Um, Guri. Into Guri. Uh, so... Yeah, uh, this is actually uh, interesting. So Mars Mike Beard says, ooh, are we going to see a bendy tractor beam? Uh, so here's the thing. Um, the way tractor beam works is the, sh the target ship does a barrel roll, right? Oh. When you do that against a Star Viper, it's going to be a curved barrel roll. Because whenever a Star Viper that. does a barrel roll, it must be a curved barrel roll. Oh. So, um, so if there's a way with contraband cybernetics to K-turn in and get the range one... He could definitely put Guri onto the rock. Uh, you could curve Guri onto the rock. Yep. Wow. Absolutely. I did not realize that's how it works. Yeah. Um, and it's it's a pretty it's a pretty tricky uh, tricky situation because um, I think before the rules uh, in first edition said it's you use the one straight. Yeah. Now it just says the ship does a barrel roll. So it would um, do whatever function that the ship functions and micro thrusters on the Star Viper state make it curve. Always do the curve. That's yep. so cool. Uh, so you could curve Guri onto the rock, um, which is not a huge deal here. You might take one damage and. And then you move immediately off of it. And you can also so, advance sensors off of it as well, can't you? Yep, you can absolutely advance provided sensors the off edge the rock. That, uh, provided yep. your edge doesn't overlap and allows you to barrel roll off of it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, so, and and this is something that um, uh, people don't uh, necessarily realize, especially people new to the game. Rocks don't prevent you from taking actions entirely. They just make you skip your perform action step exactly. that round. So if you so have you, a way to advance sensor, a focus, or something like that, you can always take your action before you can move the step basically right yeah absolutely um mars mike beard makes another point about uh the curved barrel rolls um if vipers get an illicit slot you could get two bank decloaks 
Um, but I don't think we're ever going to see an illicit slot on the Vipers. Could, could you uh, imagine stealth device Guri? I don't think anybody wants her to uh, have cloaking that. Cloaking device? No, I don't yeah. think anybody wants that. Yeah, cloaking device Guri would be bad news bears for everybody. Because that's all we'd all ever play. Mm. Yeah. Um, so 100 PT, point bid, just Guri. PT106 suggests tractoring Forlom. Actually, yes. With the sloop and the contraband, um, contraband uh, cybernetics, cybernetics um, I would I would sloop with the gunrunner. He could reverse back contraband cybernetics. It's in it's in yep. the bullseye, and then he gets to better option is actually to sloop behind him. Yep. Right. Um, I would sloop behind him, uh, and then use the tractor beam. You get him in your bullseye, so you actually hit him with two tractor beam mm-hmm. tokens, and then he then you push him where you want. Right. Um, I don't even know if you want to move him, but laying the tractor beam tokens on him would be really good. He might want to get, Aaron might want to get uh, Forlom out of his Gurry's way, who's mm. stressed and, and hurting with that structural damage. Oh, yeah, that Gurry's in, in, in bad, bad shape. I think we might be seeing him utilize his afterburners this turn. Um, yeah, so that's the thing about afterburners on Gurry, right? It's, Gurry does not like, be, does not like being killboxed, right? You mm-hmm. want to be do- dodging those arcs. So you have it there just in case you need to get out of dodge, right? And every once in a while you do. Um, and uh, there's two uses, right? There's the, oh crap, oh crap, I'm, I'm about to die. Let's get out of here. Yeah. Um, or there's the surprise positioning. There's the surprise There's the surprise positioning. Yeah. I've been seeing um, it a lot on like wedges with torpedoes to be able to mm-hmm. launch them on the first attack. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing I do, uh, like, so if you, if you start with Guri and do a four straight... And then an afterburner's boost, right? Just like you called it, by the way, with this... Oh, wait, we're not. oh I was going to sloop the other direction. Yeah, but does he fit there? But if he fits there, that's a great place to be. That's a lovely... Oh! Wait, is that a bank or a sloop? That's beautiful. Huh. I think he wants Gurry. Oh, uh, yeah. I if if he, he fits, Gurry. he can he can tractor Gurry, I guess. I love Evan, too, but I really want this to fit, just so we can <laughs> see this happen. Yeah, th- this is happening. Please tell me it fits. Judge? Yeah, it fits. No, it's it, a bump. Oh, great, tr- great try, Aaron. Oh, that is a weird choice. Um, I think he thought it would fit. Yeah. Because there's enough space to clear Zuckus. <clears throat> like you so said, though, them. throwing so. Guri onto a rock right now is really not that useful, right? You throw her onto a rock and then she just leaves the rock, right? Um, it's not that great. There might be a chance she takes one damage from rolling a hit. Yeah. Or something like that. It's maybe more about uh, affecting the position. A 2K? I did not realize that that had a 2K. Yep. There's that wonderful 2K. Oh, man. I love the G1A. Um, absolutely love the G1A. I'm mm-hmm. liking Evan's list. I might I might tweak it and so steal it. now the elusive <laughs> is really making sense on me. This four mm-hmm. is nasty. Yep. 2K. I right. did not see that 2k coming I, I guess i forgot that it had a 2k yeah i think it has a two and a four so you're going to be stopping a lot or doing the well it's got a lot, a lot of red though i think right the g1a is pretty hampered yeah the hard on. the hard ones are red mm. but you'd figure it's hampered but actually you're handing off that stress exactly. so it's really not that so bad this is why the four long build is so good and you get the free calculate whenever you do one and you recharge elusive oh my god it's, it's a really solid build um i don't know if it's dominant but it's good mm. right it is good um and a lot of fun to I fly, think, Are actually. we going to see afterburners here? I think we are going to see afterburners, and then he's probably Or it might just do... be a regular boost. And um, then he uses action now for a barrel roll and maybe get a range one shot on Zuckus. On four arms, you four mean? Arms. No, the barrel roll won't do it here. You don't um, think? Oh, yeah, you're right. No, no. No, you're right. But, um... <clears throat> maybe but, he's uh, just... The amount of distance you can gain with that combo, though, right? Now, however, had he used... If that was an... If that was... That was an afterburner. Okay, so now he's just deciding whether or not he wants to... I'm thinking the barrel roll does get him out of arc of the other Gurry, though. He is sitting on two evade dice. There's that yeah. maneuver, and he's got reduced structural. That's only... That's two... Of, that'll be... So he gets he gets the one back, so he'd be back up to three, and then he'd back down to two again. That's two, yep. two evade, and Evan has a target lock on his Gurry. I don't think he can take a shot from Evan's Gurry. No. Uh, I think he no, has to barrel roll no. here to get Aaron, out of arc. Aaron's Gurry is in a bad way, and if, if, if he loses his Gurry, it is basically game over. The gun yep. runner can't survive the rest of this absolutely um, um and if the gunrunner even lives this turn we've got forlom uh gonna have a range one shot maybe mm. um at at the gunrunner from the side here um <clears throat> so what do we got going on looks like he's just focused and putting faith in his dice okay um <clears throat> 
So uh, we've got a range two shot from Forlom into the Jakku Gunrunner. And then there's going to be a range three shot from Guri into, um, into other Guri. Uh, and this is without maneuver, which is, I mean, it's where you want him to be. Uh, we've got three, spend the focus token. That is hit, hit, crit. crit. And that's a dead Guri. Guri takes hit, crit, and explodes. Correct? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. That is. I mean, so unfortunately, that's basically game. Mm -hmm. um, we've got the gunrunner still left over, but uh, there's nothing a gunrunner can do against uh, Guri and uh, Forlom, right? Right. Uh, <clears throat> oof. There it is. Three hits into the gunrunner. Structural damage. Oof, yeah. And then Evan, Aaron at that point says there's really no point in playing yeah. that through. Uh, it, it was over when he took all that damage on his Nim in the beginning. Yep. So there it is. That's it, guys. Uh, relatively short game here with uh, Aaron versus um, Aaron versus Evan Cameron. That is the end of round five of uh, the PTL Open. Uh, looks like a fairly well-flown game. Unfortunately, Evan just dominated the match with some excellent hits. Yeah, I think uh, the turning point, too, was the amount of damage that Aaron's Nim took in that opening engagement was just obscene. Yeah, it means you can't rely on Nim for the rest of the game. You yeah. know he's going to die the next turn, yeah. and you just try and get some bombs out. Yeah, Evan was really aggressive to try and take the Nim down, and he was able yeah. to do that basically almost in the first turn. And then from there, it was very, very difficult. Aaron had his Gurry in a position where he was, she was kind of stuck, mm -hmm. taking that range one shot from Evan's Gurry, and it's just... I just think it was more of a case, too, that I think that Evan's build was just slightly more optimized, whereas yeah, Aaron's maybe. is a little bit more experimental and fun. It's and true, right? And that also right? hurts a lot, too. It is a little, definitely a little bit more experimental. For Like like I said, I think Evan's Guri build is uh, so much better than uh, Aaron's Guri build. Yeah. Uh, and it's actually cheaper by one point. Yeah. Um, so, uh, um, I mean, if I were Aaron, I'd swap out, uh, I'd get advanced sensors on my Guri. Um, uh, the Nim build, also really interesting, mm -hmm. but... Um, not effective if he gets uh, if he gets focus fire. Well, right? also blanking out on two range one shots is also pretty horrible. So yeah, you don't expect to have that happen. That's bad luck. And yeah. variance is very much a thing back in this game now. Yeah, um, probably for better, I think, in the long run, mm -hmm. because they, they, when they tried to correct variance, we got a lot of if issues in 1.0. Yes, absolutely. So and, I guess it's a it's, necessary evil. Overall, it's still a dice game, so sometimes the dice can go bad. But at least now, I think it's a little bit more balanced between how much of it is dice, how much of it, how much of it is list building, mm -hmm. and how much of it is um, uh, flying during the game. Exactly. Uh, and uh, looks like uh, things just did not go not go well for Aaron here today. Um, but uh, that's all right. There's still.